So sometimes with elimination, you get a system of equations and not only are the things not add to zero when you add them together, like in this case, um, there isn't an obvious number to multiply each one by. For example, negative two doesn't particularly go to negative nine easily. You'd have to use a fraction. Or, and the same thing with uh, the y column. Two doesn't multiply to three easily. You'd have to use a fraction. Or three doesn't multiply to two easily. Once again, you'd have to use a fraction. Uh, I, I know that fractions aren't necessarily your favorite part of math. So here's how I would go about doing these problems in order to avoid fra fractions. So uh, first understand that this technique could work for either x or y. Um, it doesn't matter. In this case, I'm going to pick y. Why did I do that? I just chose to. You, you could totally do the same problem with x as well. Um, the, I guess the real reason I chose y is that the signs are opposite. So this one's a minus, this one's a plus. Um, that saves us a step of having to multiply 1 by a negative so that they add to 0. Um, but I just want to point something out really quick. 2 times 3 equals 6, and 3 times 2 equals 6. So if I were to multiply this top row by 3, multiplying e every term by it, and multiply this row by 2, the y column would become 6y and negative 6y. Those would add together to make 0. So what I did here is I took the two numbers, I took the 2 and the, and the 3, and I multiplied them together. Knowing that no matter, when you multiply two numbers together, you're going to get the same results. So I multiplied the top row by 3 and the bottom row by 2. They luckily had opposite signs so that when, when you would add them together, it would go away. So let's go ahead and finish multiplying out the rest of the rows. So we have to make sure that we get everything when we multiply. So we have negative 27x, because that's 9 times 3. And we already have the plus 6y. And lastly, negative 23 times 3, that is negative 69. We got to do the same thing with the next row. Negative 4x minus 6y. And negative 24. Add them together. Um, that gives us negative 31x plus 0y equals negative 93, I think. Double check that with the calculator. Um, no, no, that should work out good. Uh, so then we have negative 31x is equal to negative 93. Divide by negative 31. We get x equals 3. Good, there's one half of our answer. Um, as I said in the last video, I write, you can plug the 3 into any of these equations. You could do it to the top one, the bottom one, or either of these ones that we multiplied. However, in my experience, students make the fewest amount of mistakes if you just plug it into one of the original equations. So uh, I'm going to pick this bottom one here. You could uh, pick any of them. It should work. I'm just going to rewrite it over here. Um, why did I pick that one? The numbers seem the smallest? I don't know. I, I just did. Um, but there are other options as well. So let's go ahead and just plug in 3 for x. Negative 2 times 3 minus 3y equals negative 12. That's negative 6 minus 3y is equal to negative 12. We get y equals 2 for our answer. So then our, our final form, it's got to be 3, comma, 2. We could have done the problem with the x multiplying by the two numbers in the x column and have gotten the same results. 
that would have worked just fine so long as all the other math is correct. I just picked the Y column in this case. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just help you get the next one set up. And then I think you should be able to do it from here. Um, let's go ahead and look at other problems. Hold, please. I'm looking at number six. We have negative six x plus three y equals zero and negative five x minus four y is equal to 26. Um, just for variety's sake, I'm going to pick the x column this time. Um, y, just to show you a different take. Um, so we have negative 6 and negative 5. Uh, multiply those together, you get 30. So if we multiply the top row by 5 and the bottom row by... Now, this is going to be kind of tricky. I'm going to do it by negative 6. Why did I do it by negative 6? Well, I'll show you here in a second. So let's go ahead and multiply those through. Just going to do some math. Uh, that's going to be... I'm doing the top row first. Negative 30x plus 15y equals 0. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and do negative 6. So negative 6 times negative 5, that's going to be positive 30x. That's why I multiplied by negative 6, to make sure that we had opposite signs, plus 24y. And I don't have 26 times 6 on my fingertips. That'll be 156. All right, so let's go ahead. We could add those together. We get 39y equals negative 156. We get y is equal to negative 4. All right, I trust that you can solve the problem the rest of the way from there. Um, as always, email me with additional questions and let me know what's going on. Okay, thanks.